All right, now in 13.6, after having gone over the definition of the directional derivative and how it's connected to this new vector we defined, the gradient vector, we can go ahead and see all these things in action. So question one on your worksheet says to consider the function f of xy is x squared times the cosine of y. And our job in part A is to compute the gradient of that function uh, at any point xy. So just recall that the definition we made at the end of the intro video for the gradient vector right, is that it is the vector whose i component is the partial derivative of f with respect to x and its j component is the partial derivative of f with respect to y. So if I go ahead and compute these partial derivatives for this specific function, well the x derivative would be 2x cos y and the y derivative would be minus x squared sine y and this is the gradient vector at any point xy. Alright, so then for part b it says Find the slope of the surface z equals f of xy at the point p whose coordinates are 1 pi in the direction u whose components are 2 over root 5 and 1 over root 5. That is, find the directional derivative of our function f at 1 pi in the direction of u. Alright, so the big takeaway from the uh, video uh, for the intro was that the directional derivative of our function at a point a, b in the direction of u could be computed using this gradient vector where we evaluate it at the point a, b and then we take the dot product of that vector with our direction vector u. And there was a assumption we made in this derivation in the intro video that the vector u was a unit vector or in other words it has a magnitude equal to 1. Now if I look at this uh, vector u, does this have a magnitude of 1? Well, I'll go ahead and compute the magnitude. Just take the sum of the squares of the components and then take their square root. So I'm really just computing the length of the vector, right? That's all the magnitude is. 4 fifths and 1 fifth is 5 fifths and that's 1, so this does have length 1. So here, u, our direction vector, is a unit vector. Okay, so now the thing about um, the, the direction vector, it may not always be presented as a unit vector. We'll see in some problems to come uh, where that's not the case, and we can make a pretty simple adjustment. The other thing I want to say about this is that I haven't really given you a, a full explanation as to why this is an important criteria uh, in order to apply this, this result. It didn't show up at least in an explicit way in our derivation. So that will also uh, be coming in a video uh, soon. But let's go ahead now and finish the computation. We have our directional derivative of our function f at the point 1 pi in the direction of u. So this will be our gradient evaluated at 1 pi dotted with this direction vector u and to find the components of our gradient vector at the point 1 pi just plug in 1 for x and pi for y and the cosine of pi is negative 1 and then I'd get a 2 times 1 from the 2x so this would just be negative 2 there for the i component plugging 1 in for x and pi in for y here for the j component sine of pi is 0 so that's actually going to have a 0 uh, j component then I'm going to take the dot product of this thing with our vector 2 over root 5 and 1 over root 5. And so this dot product would come out to be what? Minus 4 over root 5. And then plus 0 times 1 over root 5. And that's just 0. So this, in fact, is the value of our directional derivative. And so what that's saying in terms of our surface is that if I move in the direction u along our surface, our surface will be sloping downward, okay? So 
the slope here of the hillside would be this minus 4 over root 5. So we're moving downhill at this rate in the direction of u. All right, that's going to do it for this problem. Thanks.